welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to be talking about how you can make being self-employed and working from home work for you. Just a mini update on my crime novel Every Time He Dies. I've been going through all of the edits from my editor, I've hired a book cover designer, and I've also hired an interior formatter. A lot of self-published authors organize and format their own interior, but I've actually decided to hire a professional for that task because the idea of doing it myself kind of makes my head want to explode. There are so many ways that you can format your book for free using online platforms like draft to digital but I have put so much work into this novel, like five years of my life, so I want it to look the best that it can look and I will definitely be giving you guys the story behind the story as time goes on, so stay tuned. If you want to stay up to date with all of my self-publishing stuff, feel free to follow me on Instagram or join my newsletter at taraeast.com where I'll be providing all the details as I release them. Now on to today's topic. I'm going to be talking about how to be self-employed and work from home. If you are self-employed and work from home, then you're largely in charge of your own schedule. However, people around you, family and friends, they kind of misread this control as meaning that you can just work whenever. But the problem is, creating an ideal work routine takes time. We have to figure out whether we work best in the mornings, the afternoon or at night. We try all different creative processes such as outlining, discovery writing or a combination of both. We have to learn whether we are disciplined enough to check email once a day or whether we can even have it open all day or whether we need to actually switch the Wi-Fi off when we're in our writing sessions. We test out different cafes and libraries to figure out which ones have the best lighting, non-invasive music and relaxed staff. I know that we can all get kind of precious about our writing routines, but the reality is it took a really long time to figure out what routine best supported you, your energy and the work. When you find a routine that works, you want to stick to it. Unfortunately, these routines are also very fragile. It is ideal to set aside a reasonable chunk of time, preferably during our optimal working hours, in order to do the deep work we need to do in order to write the novel. Every time someone knocks on the door, sends a text message or an email, that is enough to get you off your game and out of that zone. In fact, every time you are interrupted, it takes 15 minutes to get back in the zone. Sometimes friends call or text inviting us out to morning coffees or to go see a midday movie because you know, you work from home, you can make up the time later. The problem is, you only have so many good hours in a day. If you spend three of your optimal hours having coffee or seeing a movie, you're not gonna get that time back. You can make up for those three hours later by working into the afternoon and evening, but the fact is the quality of that work is not going to be the same had you produced it during your optimal working hours. There is only one way to negotiate our working schedule with loved ones, and that's communication. That means we need to tell our family and friends what our non-negotiable working hours are. If you consider yourself a morning person, get yourself into your office as quickly as you can and as early as you can. Tell your family that you are unavailable between the hours of say 9am and 12pm. You can then reserve less urgent tasks for the afternoon such as administration or email. Though it may still be undesirable to be interrupted during your afternoon time, you can let your family know that you are available between 1 and 5 if they need you. If you have adult children, teenagers or friends that you are constantly in contact with via text message, tell them not to text you during your non-negotiable work hours. You can also switch your phone onto flight mode or leave it in another room. But I do know that some people prefer to have their phone handy just in case there's an emergency. You need to make it more difficult for people to reach you, not easier. 
and no one is going to contact you via email or text message if there's an emergency. If the house is burning down, metaphorically speaking, are people gonna call you? Being self-employed and working from home is a dream scenario for most people. The downside is that a home-based business is often seen as not serious, as though the money earned from writing articles is fake money and the money earned in any other industry is real money. Writing, being self-employed and working from home is a privilege, but it's also a job. A job that you need to dedicate time to, a job that requires a schedule and that requires you to stick to the schedule. Family and friends may never see your career in that way, or they may forget to not contact you during non-negotiable hours. But you do have the power to say no to invitations and requests, to switch off your devices, and to close your web browser. We can't stop life from happening, but you can minimize its ability to distract you. And don't worry, all those requests and invitations and interruptions will still be there when you're done, just waiting for you. But at least you'll be more generous in dealing with those problems because you've already tended to one of the most important priorities in your life, writing. There you have it guys, those are my thoughts on how to successfully be self-employed and work from home. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. I'm on social media, which is Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. All the links are below. I also have a weekly writing blog over at TaraEast.com. If you sign up for my weekly newsletter, you'll also receive a free downloadable copy of my workbook, The Writer's Kickstarter Pack. How to create a blog and get published. It's free. Go sign up. Go do it. Create a blog. Post some stuff. Be fabulous. Do it. I hope you've had a really great week. Go do some writing and I'll see you next time.